Hey everybody, this is John Fenn with uh, SupernaturalHouseChurch.org or, or uh, ChurchWithoutWallsInternational.org coming to you very early because I've got a plane to catch, so not at my normal time. Uh, but today talk to you about that person that you're praying for. And this specifically has to do with how the Lord communicates to us that everything is okay and, uh, and just where we are in that prayer list. And what I mean by that is, is many of us have relatives that don't know the Lord or they know the Lord, but they've stepped away for a time. And, and for whatever reason, they're not living like, as they should. And so we pray for them. And then uh, the question is, how do we know that the Lord is working and what communication from heaven might we have? And what are we to do when we see them living ungodly lives and there's, we're, we're worried about them, we're afraid for them? Uh, a bit scared for them, etc. So uh, let's talk about that. In Mark chapter 5, there's a great example. In Mark chapter 5, uh, verses uh, roughly 20, 21, uh, 22 through about 36, is the story of Jairus. And in Mark chapter 5, what happens is J uh, Jairus comes to Jesus and he says, Master, come, my little daughter is sick, lay hands on her and she shall live. That's very important. He says, he says if you come and lay hands on her, she will live. And Jesus said, I'll come. So as Jesus is coming, there's a woman who has a hemorrhaging issue and has had it for 12 years. It makes her ceremonially uh, unclean, which means she's uh, almost the same as a leper or somebody like that. And um, so when Jesus is going to Jairus' house, she comes up in the crowd and touches the hem of his garment and gets healed. She, it says, I love the way it's worded in Mark. It says, she said within herself, if I but touch the hem of his garment, I shall be healed. And so that's exactly what she does. The crowd's pressing in and everything else, and she just touches the hem of his garment. And Jesus stops, and he says, who touched me? And Peter and the disciples say, what are you talking about? Look at, the, look at the mob. Look at the crowd. Everybody's touching you. We're doing our best for crowd control here, Lord, but everybody's touching you. He said, no, no, no. He said, I felt power going out from me. And finally, she admits it, and, and he says, your faith has made you whole. And so it says, immediately, as he was still speaking, immediately, people came from Jairus' house and said, don't bother the master any further because your little daughter is dead. And Jesus' response to her is this, be not afraid, only believe. And my, my point today is, what is Jesus saying for Jairus to believe? Be not afraid, only believe. Because when Jesus said, I will come, when, he, when Jairus had told him, you come and lay hands on her and she will live, and Jesus said, I will come, and then all this happens, Jesus says, don't, number one, don't be afraid. And then number two, just believe. What he is asked to believe is what he originally believed back at the beginning. That if he comes and lays hands on her, she will live. And when Jesus said, I will come lay hands on her, it did not matter. This is my point. Once he had that word from heaven, once he had that word from the Lord, then it didn't matter what happened to his little girl. It didn't matter if she got better, got worse. It didn't matter if she died. But his job was just to believe the original thing. And I go back to this over and over again uh, in my own life. I go back and say, okay, what is the last word that I had? Where is the peace that I had? For instance, I, I, I was talking with somebody and, um, and their adult child who had walked with the Lord, had had some amazing things happen to them when they were teenagers. They go off to college and such, and they're not walking with the Lord right now. And they're very, very much afraid of their salvation. And, and I go back and I remember asking the lady, I said, you know, do you have any word from the Lord? Do you have any bit of peace, anything at all? And they said, well, you know, the Lord told me back in such and such when the kids were little that they were going to walk with him and everything would be okay. And then I went to him, uh, you know, a few weeks ago in prayer and I felt that peace that, that, you know, he gave me that peace. And I said, okay, then don't be afraid, just believe. Go back to the last thing that you received from him. You see, that peace from heaven is, is that peace that you have is from heaven, and it's the signal that it's okay. This is the point that, that Jesus made in John 16, 13. He said, the spirit of truth, he is a truth, he is not a lie, and he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak of, the, of himself, but of uh, but what he hears, and he will show you things to come. That communication, that peace, that witness that you have in your spirit, that everything is okay for that person that you're loving uh, and, and, and wanting to see in heaven, that peace is heaven's communication to your spirit that the Father God has it under control, that it's okay. And so just like Jairus, it did not matter 
what happened to Jairus's little daughter once Jesus said, I'll come and lay hands on her. It did not matter if her fever got worse. It didn't matter if, if she died because once he had that word, I will come and lay hands on her. It didn't matter what happened in between. And when, so when, when the word came that Jairus's daughter had, de had died, Jesus said, don't be afraid. Just believe. In other words, Jairus, don't be afraid of what they say. Just go back to what you originally wanted me to do, which was lay hands on her. And when Jesus did lay hands on her, of course, she lived. But I want you to see what happened in between. How did Jairus conduct himself? How did Jesus conduct himself? Once Jesus told Jairus to go back to what you originally believed, go back to that peace, go back to that answer that you originally had. Don't look at the circumstances that have changed in their lives right now. Don't look at how they're walking with the Lord right now. Go back to that original peace. Go back to that original word that you had. What did Jesus do? Well, the text says in Mark chapter 5, from that point on, Jesus did not allow anybody to follow him but, but Peter, James, and John. So what that means is, um, what that means is that Jesus used the rest of the disciples as kind of a, um, a crowd control, if you will. And when he got to Jairus's house, it says the, the women and the mourners were already there. So she had died, word had gone out, people were there in the neighborhood, they were crying, you know, this 12-year-old or so little girl had, had died. And it says, Jesus put them all forth. When he said, don't be, a, he, he said to them, he said, she's only sleeping, it's only temporary. And they laughed him to scorn, which means they were mocking Jesus. And it says, Jesus put them all forth. Now it's interesting because the Greek language indicates Jesus used force. In other words, this was not just a, just a hey, okay, thanks for coming now. It's, uh, you know, isn't your uh, tea boiling, your tea water boiling? Uh, this was, he used Peter, James, and John, and he put them all forth. The, the Greek is, is stronger. He used force. He said, okay, he ushered them out. Not that he hit them or anything like that, but he used force. He forcibly caused them to leave and shut the door. Then he went in, raised her from the dead, and presented her to mom and dad. And the point is this, there are points of people of unbelief around you that when, when fear happens, when, when you, you receive the peace from the Lord, like Jairus, I'm going to come lay hands on her and she'll live. And then uh, you go about your business. You, you say, okay, I'm not going to be afraid. I'm only going to believe. You're going to run into people who are, who are the, the naysayers. You're going to run into people who are full of unbelief. And, you, you know, just like Jesus, you may hear them. They may say things to you, but you may have to limit what the subject is, what you talk about, because you're believing for that loved one to be saved. And they go on, and this person goes on and on about addictions, and they go on and on about the crowd that they're running with, and go on and on about where they saw them sinning, you know, a couple of weeks ago and all that. You may have to just put that out of your mind, at least forcibly put it out of your mind, and possibly limit your relationships on who, what, what you hang around with and who hangs around with you and, and what they say, and put them all forth and just believe, just go back to what you originally believed. Find that peace again. Once you have that peace, it's still there. It will still be there. So put the fear away from you. Fear is a spirit. Rebuke that spirit of fear. And then mentally go back, put put forth all that, all that unbelief, put it out of the room of your mind, out of the house of your mind, and go back to that last point of peace. Go back to that last point that you had from the Lord. And when you do that, you'll find that peace again. And then at that point, it does not matter what the circumstances look like. Stick with that peace because that's your answer from heaven that the Father God has it under control. All right, that's how you walk in peace. Yes, you continue to pray for him and everything, but you do so from a position of having already won. You do so from a position of peace and strength. And, and just like Jairus, if you want to look at that in Mark chapter 5, Jesus said, don't be afraid, just believe. Go back to that last point of, of the word that you have or the peace that you have from the Lord and stay on that and separate yourself from what the circumstances look like. Separate yourself from that unbelief. All right, God bless. Talk to you next week where I'll be back at normal time.